Hello, this is Hope, and you're listening to Covert Castaway. Welcome to my weekly diary of what I learn and how I cope with transitioning to life as a liveaboard cruiser. Last weekend, our boat was boarded by some land pirates who decided to force the salon door open, squat on our boat, have a little party, and then made off with a bunch of stuff. In today's episode, we'll share what happened, how it's all getting resolved or not, and our fast education on marine security systems. You could not make this up if you tried. We were in the middle of commissioning our boat, which was just a week out of the factory and on the hard. My husband had to drop everything and caught the last flight out of Paris before the airline stopped flying to the U.S. As the world was locked down, our boat sat somewhere all alone on the hard waiting to complete its commissioning, when a merry band of hooligans thought it would be fun to party like rock stars and crap in the toilets, with dry tanks I might add, on our boat that was barely propped up well enough to survive a strong gust of wind. After making off with a large TV, stealing all the fire extinguishers and flares, my husband's sailing gear and other items, we learned that our broker just wants us to file a police report and an insurance claim because officially they said the boat is in our possession. I've spent the last week being furious about all this. With a few more days having gone by, I have a bit more perspective. And this is the story that we want to share today. Okay, so today we're going to talk about this crazy madness of the last week. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I guess last week there was coming to the realization that we would not leave mid-June because the borders for France and most likely the other European countries are going to be closed. Um, well, we don't know for sure, but it sounds like it might get the borders might be closed until the end of the summer season. Because they don't want tourists and stuff <clears throat> To travel around and spread the virus. Yeah. So that was last week. This week, more drama. <laughs> <sighs> so we get on the phone with our broker. We, we set up the call with them to try to figure out what the next steps were for commissioning since we weren't there and, and how long we were going to be. Because we kind of wrapped our heads around the timing, right? So we get on the phone with them. And he says, oh, it's interesting you wanted to set up a call for today because your boat got broken into over the weekend. Well, over the lockdown. Well, yeah, because they opened up on Tuesday or whatever. Tuesday this week, yeah. They started some companies, started working again <clears throat> in, uh, in La Rochelle. And uh, then they found out that our boat had been broken into. Yeah. So apparently because everybody was locked down, there was no foot traffic that was normally part of, you know, people working on boats and whatever. Because you had left in a hurry. Everybody kind of started shutting things down and everything just stayed in place. So our boat ended up staying in place. And I'm sure we'll cover that in a minute. But yeah, so that, I mean, you and I were on the phone and I don't think we said anything for... At least 30 seconds. I was stunned. I mean... Yeah, I mean, me too. I mean, on one way, you can understand, yeah, there is no foot traffic, so I'm sure squatters, thieves have taken advantage of the lockdown. And and I guess our boat being not in the marina per se, but being in a parking lot next to the marina, uh, probably didn't benefit from any security rounds or maybe video cameras that are maybe somewhere on the yeah, so, docks. So, this is, so there's two things that bother me about this. I mean, there was stuff stolen and on the boat and that doesn't even bother me. I think the first thing that bothers me is the boat was in this sort of staging area when you saw it last and it was sort of this parking lot of some other building. It wasn't in the marina. It wasn't at the broker. It wasn't at the commissioning agent. It wasn't with the manufacturer. So it was in some weird no man's land of a space. Yeah. The- and in hindsight, yeah. like, like, you know, of course I get it, but in hindsight, it, it, it just wasn't even safe. It wasn't even monitored that area, but also nobody knew there was going to be nobody walking around. 
either and, and just kind of keeping people on their best behavior. So that's the first thing that bothers me. The second thing that bothers me is these people, and we think it's now mul- multiple people, a group of people. Um, so That's what he said, right? Yeah, well, it could be multiple people and or it could be few people but for a long period of time yeah and the reason reason we know that is because they used all the toilets so the boat literally just came out of the factory all the tanks are dry it's not hooked up to water of any kind it's not hooked up to anything it wasn't in a position to even be used like there's plastic on everything Mm -hmm. so that was good because there's plastic on the beds and you know, for the most part, and they slept there and stuff. And so, you know, that's that's good. And they also smoked in the boat, mm-hmm. which is like, oh, my God. So it's the smell issue. And, you know, our broker sent someone to clean the toilets, which is great, but there's still stuff in the tanks. And if the boat sits there all summer... Well, you won't. You won't. Yeah. You won't. I know, yeah. but this is the first thing that went through my mind, right, yeah, is yeah. that crap was going to sit in the tanks all summer and just like ferment this awful smell. Well, (laughs) first it stayed there and fermented for how many days or weeks because the lockdown was, I don't know, maybe close to a month or something. And before they started again. So, um, so they didn't even check the boat within those, that six month period, six week period of time. Well, they did rounds, but the, the the boats went from the outside you could not see you know because they forced the sliding door to get in and once you're in i mean unless you had security at night to maybe see lights lights on or or something yeah then you would have maybe checked that but um yeah and it's hard to get into because it's uh i mean you have a ladder swim ladder um, it was left in an up position. So. Well, yeah. So this is another thing mm-hmm. is the boat was up on stilts or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and balancing like teeter tottering on these little. No, no, it's, it's stable. Uh, oh, come but, on. but it's like, so you have the, you have, you had to bring the lighter down and then to reach the lighter. I mean, you, well, you need either some, something like to boosting climb onto, each other up or something. Oh yeah. You need at least two people. So um, so yeah, but they found a way and they forced the door. So that has to be, hopefully not the whole door that has to be replaced, but something has, yeah, the door's not working. Going to, yeah. So the door of the boat was somehow secured apparently, even though the door wasn't officially installed because they don't do that until they put the boat in the water. Well, it was installed, but it's not fully installed because once they put the boat in the water, the, everything moves a little bit. And then they do the fine adjustment for the door. So it was locked. It had to be forced um, and bent. Um, and now I guess there's some <laughs> it's locked again, but nothing prevents anybody from really doing yeah. the same thing. So every day, I guess we hope for the best yeah. until we have a solution. So the situation is that they took, we had a large TV in there that we were going to get installed. Yeah. We had some personal new. item, brand new TV in a box, which was super convenient for them to be able to walk away with it. Mm-hmm. Um, they took some of your sailing gear, mm-hmm. your brand new spin lock, life jacket, life jacket your fowleys, um, yeah. my deck shoes, which I really liked, um, and maybe some other things, but... Yeah, it's hard to hard to tell. I mean, to know because when the lock, lockdown was announced, um, I had to pack a lot of stuff and and then trying to figure out where to put that stuff. So, some of it, the most expensive, the the, the boat equipment stuff, was packed and put in a container at our commissioning commissioning agent. The folding bikes as well, and maybe some other things. Then I had made the decision to take on all the tools that I had bought to bring them back to my parents. The camera, video equipment, same thing. I brought it to my parents. 
Um, so, and after that, um, I and had the left life some, raft too. We left somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. At a, in a warehouse, yeah. and and then books that I left in the apartment where which I, I was renting. So there was stuff everywhere, and obviously I put some stuff on the boat. But in my mind, I was like, okay, this, you know, if it stays on the boat, we'll be fine. The TV completely forgot about it because the TV had been put on the boat weeks before that yeah uh, waiting for the it to be installed to, to be installed yeah. and so so it, it could have been much worse if everything had been put on the boat oh for sure yeah and the thing is is you know you hadn't slept either because of Everything happened so quickly, and we were trying to get to the, you to the airport. So when you were packing up the car, what well, to my parents to yeah. go to your parents mm. and and doing all that. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm by myself and packing everything, bringing all the boxes yeah. to the car, bringing the stuff to wherever, finding a solution where to put everything. So that was a lot of stuff to do in a short period of time. So I'm trying. I see the pictures that uh, our, our dealer sent, trying to visualize what was put on the boat, what for sure is missing. And um, so we might discover later on that, yeah. you know. Maybe uh, some lines. But even our new sails were somewhere else. I mean, yeah. it could have been a lot worse. There, could, there was a lot of boat stuff that could have been. And and it seems like, I mean, they stole stuff, but they were a combination of squatters slash thieves. But they were not like pure thieves because they left a lot of stuff. I yeah. mean, all the electronic equipment that is installed on the boat. Yeah, I mean, they could have ripped it out. Yeah, yeah. nothing yeah. was I removed. mean, so that that's good. There was a TV that is installed in the boat that was not removed. So, so there were other things that they could have taken and didn't. Yeah. So... In the big picture, the standard paddle board was not taken, so that was nice. Yeah, too. That's that was good. brand new. Yep. So the situation is, uh, we have a boat that's halfway secured. It's still in the same spot. People mm-hmm. are back to work, so walking around. Although it's not everybody back to work, well, so working around during the day. At during night, the day, at night, we don't know. It's an industrial area, right? So there's nothing yet. It's night. still in the same parking lot, and um, apparently the door is secured with rope and tape. So mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So uh, meanwhile, I think they're going to try to finish doing the bottom paint. And yeah, yeah. So there was. There were a few things to do. The solar panels have been installed this week, so they've been working on the remaining projects. That was a big one. Um, and then the next big project is uh, is going to start Wednesday if the weather stays the same, uh, and they'll do the copper coat. Uh, and you're super project. excited because we got the copper coat. So, yeah, the, I mean, okay, there's lots of negatives, you know, obviously uh, the boat breaking into and stuff being stolen. But, um, yeah, with the lockdown, nobody enjoys the lockdown. There's a lot of negatives around it. But now with the delay, the temperatures are now good to do the copper coat, which yeah. when was not possible in February. And just to reiterate, we're taking a gamble. We hope that it gets put on correctly and and I guess we'll see. I think this is our best shot at getting a good job done. So yeah. So that's the situation and then and then after so, it's done commissioning, right? Well, then the, so after the copy code, mm-hmm. so it happens Wednesday, Thursday, the boat needs to stay on the hard for another 3 days, so that will be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So best case scenario it will it will be put in the water on Monday. So that will be a, a week weekend, from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow. So that means during that whole time, the boat is still going to be in that same location on the parking lot. So the other thing that we've been trying to do remotely is to try to secure the boat by installing a security system. Right. And that's kind of what we want to talk more about. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, because even though the boat will be in the water, it's still at the dock. And the dock isn't a lock dock. It's a public Public dock. dock, So. So there's a lot of other things we're looking into, like, you know, what happens if we can't get to the boat until September? So from, you know, the end of this month all the way to September, we don't really want the boat just on the public dock. So we're trying to figure out where to put it, if that's the case. But then mostly how do we secure the boat and, and provide surveillance for the boat while all this is happening? Yeah, yeah, and and the option seems to be very limited because there is no boats coming in and out of La Rochelle. So right now, the only solution we have is to leave it with the other boats um, that are from Fontaine-Pajot, yeah. that are basically that are put there. Um, so 
if that's the case, uh, that's fine. But we definitely yeah, I don't know if it's fine. Well. I mean, we we and we get conflicting information. You know, the 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 dealer and the commissioning agent seem to be feel pretty confident about having the boat on the dock there because they say, oh, we're there, we're walking around, we're working, we can see what's going on. But we've talked to other owners who pick their boats up in La Rochelle and from the same dealer and the, you know, the same boat manufacturer. And they've said that people jump on the boats all the time and sleep on the boats. And we have friends who was, they were on the boat and someone came on the boat and slept on their uh, cockpit. cockpit over the night. So I don't know. We're getting conflicting information, yeah. you know, it's one thing to sort of just crash and like sleep there. It's another thing to, you know, break, break in, in and, mm. and take stuff. So, yeah, yeah, there's definitely some some of that from younger people yeah. who just want a place to hang out and they, they get have on concerts and stuff in the summer, right? There is like a fair not yeah. too far or so. So, so that's convenient for them. Um, so there is that. Then there is potential, you know, squatters, and then there is like thieves. Yeah. So uh, pirates. They're all pirates. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about security systems. Mm-hmm. So uh, I really, really wanted a ghost system because they're awesome and, of course, way too expensive. Um, but what I liked about it was it comes with, it's a fully integrated system. So the video and the uh, infrared beams and the sensors and everything is all integrated into one system. There's not extra parts or sensors you need to buy. And then they have this cloak feature where you could be in the boat or you could be remote and view someone who's boarding your boat and going inside the salon and the uh, device is activated and it lets off this smoke and this piercing noise. So between the noise, the strobe light, and then the smoke, they can't see where they're going. And Mm. that's supposed to be a pretty good deterrent because there's what are they going to do? Like they're frozen in -hmm. in their tracks. Okay. So we got a quote for that system and I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be maybe $5,000, you know, with everything. And then you can add on additional things. Like they're a partner of, um, Fleur and they have those, um, infrared infrared temperature sensor. Yeah. So they basically put a camera on the top of your mast. So if someone falls off the boat, um, the theory is you would be able to at night you would be able to see them the heat uh, the heat on of in the body yeah of the of body the on, head, I guess. on your chart plot or whatever so um, yeah so we I have looked into the cameras they're expensive and I knew that but um, the quote we got back I was thinking okay four or five thousand dollars and then a couple thousand dollars to put it in. We got a quote back and it was $35,000, was which it? is crazy. I, really I maybe didn't even tell you the final price because uh. I was blown away. Um, and I don't even think that included like their latest system. It was the one below it. So clearly that system is not meant for our boat that's was 47 it, did feet. Did it include installation? Yeah, it did include installation. So that's one of the drawback of the Ghost Global system. Oh, that's right. Is yeah. they, they require a certified technician to install the system. So there is no DIY. You buy the parts. No, they wanted it. to install it themselves. And in fact, what happened was the dealer for Ghost was in Italy. For Europe, yeah. For Europe. And, and she had to figure out how to get from Italy to France. And with the border situation, I don't know, she needed like a signed piece of paper and all these extra approvals. So let's say the price was right. There were still some hurdles to get past Mm -hmm. for the ghost system. Yeah. So you want to talk about the Siren? I think the conclusion, it's it's a high-end system. Uh, I guess great system, yeah. but very expensive, and it's it, probably not for our size boat. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, well, we know other people yeah. you know, that have installed this system on on this size boat. So I guess if you really want the the high end, then you can. But uh, it's probably better and easier to get it installed in the U.S. Uh, it yeah. seems to be very uh, uh, very have a great presence in the U.S. In Europe, it doesn't seem to be as um, yeah, but as it was available. expensive, and but their marketing's really good. Their website's awesome. Mm-hmm. So you want to talk about the Siren Marine? So then the next system we looked at is uh, from Siren Marine, and um, and this one is a system that 
uh, is also, I mean, it has multiple uh, accessories you can buy, like the, the alarm. Uh, you can buy um, so different sensors to detect, you know, if somebody comes on the boat. Um, what else? So well, there, for battery, oh, for, for yeah. water monitoring, um, yeah. there's a converter. So, so the, there is there, there are basically two things. Yeah, one is just to monitor your boat and see if there was any uh, anything that unusual, like you lose to short power if you're at the dock, or you know. Right. So then you'll get notified. So that's that's one piece. The other piece is really um, see if there is an intruder on your boat and and try to you know make sure they don't come on your boat through. but they don't have integrated video so, so it's that's a whole one separate thing. yeah the system is the price wise price wise it's pretty good yeah it's very good uh you can buy the different accessories so that's pretty good they don't have at this time at least an integrated video system so if um like for example at a house here we install a nest uh, system from google so we can monitor we get notification and but if there is a notification and we are like say remote or even when we're on the house we can see like okay who came by the front door and then we can check okay that was you know a neighbor or something but then we're thinking if there is no integrated video system so we're going to get notification we're like thousands of miles away it's and two then, separate systems is the point like you got to keep yeah. checking different things and you're getting notifications from different things and yeah so then we could buy some video camera system that will probably have its own app and its yeah. own you know uh, subscription and there it starts to not be really useful if if we want to monitor because if we get a notification somebody's on board, you know, is it like like a kid comes on board and we can say, you know, okay, let's disregard it, let's monitor. Or if it's like a thief, then we have to call the police or the marina or, you know, call somebody yeah. to, to, to act. And given the situation, like, we don't even know if anybody could react or respond. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so I mean, there's the siren, the alarm that can go on and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like this. And you hope that's enough. But then we have no visual to know, okay, is everything good? Is it a pelican yeah. or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we need, yeah. we, and then we started to get from, um, from people we know, some other systems. And then, can I just say one more thing about yeah. the Siren? So those guys, um, oh, yeah. at, at Siren Marine were awesome. They, they called me back right away. They answered all my questions. Um, they explained this, uh, the video system that they would recommend. I think they called it blink or something. Mm -hmm. It's an Amazon based system. Um, according to the site and according to what he said, there, there wasn't a subscription, but I don't know how that goes if you're offshore, you know, there's, there's a whole different kind of set of things. But, mm -hmm. um, my point is that they were really helpful. I think mm -hmm. they wanted to jump in the trench with us. They understood what was going on. Like I said, we had multiple phone calls in, in just like a day and a half. Um, and we're just, you know, assessing that system. The price is right. I think the whole thing out the door with all the parts we wanted, was maybe like a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars or something like mm -hmm. that by the time you add the cameras. No, no, not the, oh, you mean the uh, external yeah, system? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, the price is right. The people are nice, super responsive, and it was something that uh, people know how to install. Yeah. So the commissioning agent, other workers in La Rochelle now, they've worked with those systems before and f are familiar with them. So that 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 was another thing. And the other interesting thing also that they have is uh, for Genoa, uh, so for the monoholes uh, that are being built in the U.S., um, they have their unit, so their control unit where you plug all the accessories installed by default all in all the Genoa U.S. boats. Right. So, so you're like, okay, that must be a good system if yeah. you know, some company like Jano in the U.S. has decided to uh, to do this. And we know that um, you know uh, maybe Fountain Pressure is also looking at them, looking yeah. at that. So. But it, you know, if something breaks, you can get a part pretty quickly, mm -hmm. and they're not super expensive. You know, it yeah. The only drawback I would say for people in Europe is they they're a U.S. based company. They have a dealer in the U.K., uh, but all the shipments and you have to pay for shipping. Orders, yeah, because it's all uh, online. From the US. Yeah, they yeah. they set it up their website, so you literally it's like Amazon. You just put things in your cart and order it, and then get mm. it shipped wherever. So that's how that works. So yeah, a lot of positive points, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, the, the the one thing is we are 
kind of looking at you know getting video as well and to get something as similar as Nest basically. Well, it's so funny to. because we were talking about it and it's like okay in the current situation what we really need is like a Nest talking can like the the thing we have on our front door where you can actually talk to people <laughs> you know like yeah. so you see someone walking by and you're like hey get off my boat you know because you don't know who's going to be there at any given time so we were thinking wow how do you how do you set up a google so you could actually talk to yeah. people on the boat yeah. or, or at least pretend like you're on the boat or something and the outdoor cameras are yeah. too big but like yeah. the uh the doorbell um, is pretty small. And so how funny would that be to mount a doorbell? Yeah. Just to be, yeah. The, if you yes, get on the doorbell. boat, please ring the bell. Yeah. Ring the bell. <laughs> and then we can see you. And but even if they don't it. push the button, you can still see them because it's an active camera and you can yeah. speak to them. Like yeah. I do that all the time with the guys delivering the mm -hmm. mail or not the packages or whatever at, at yeah. our front door. Anyway. So, so you want to talk about the other system we looked at? Yeah. So the, the, other system we're currently evaluating is um, is from a company called Yacht Sentinel, and they are based in the UK. They have been in business, I think, for ten plus years, and they have a pretty sweet uh, system. Also, um, with video, they recently uh, released uh, some video cameras that are integrated into their system. Um, so that's great. They are small. They are not super cheap, <laughs> but uh, that's great. And also they have, um, they have obviously a, a bunch of sensors. They are all wireless sensors, uh, except maybe the alarm. Um, so they're battery powered. So the batteries on average, they say last about a year. Um, so you, once a year, I guess you change all the batteries, but you can have the sensors in different locations for the installation. It will be super simple. It's kind of like, it's Sarin Marine. It was sort of like that because, um, you could add, you know, different sensors or, or different additions, like the global offshore thing. And so, yeah, I mean, so you have a cellular system yeah, for those, um, because either through Wi-Fi or cellular, you'd want to be able to get the notification. So typically you have some kind of um, subscription. Uh, now, if you wanted your boat being tracked offshore, um, because if it was to be stolen, for example, so you could add um, a, a camera, uh, not a camera, sorry, an antenna, uh, for uh, through a satellite system. And then you will get a notification uh, this way, and also you will get the positioning of the boat. Mm -hmm. Siren Marine had that too. Yes, and it, the I think the just to go back to them, I think you could get a seasonal or an annual yeah, subscription. Monthly, monthly. Uh, well, that's for the cellular, I think. Yeah. Uh, for the other one, is it's uh, it works through Inmarsat for one of them. I forgot the other. Uh, basically, it's through a satellite company, and on average, it's like three hundred dollars a year if yeah. you want to get this notification and slight positioning through the um, through satellites when you're offshore so they have that also yacht sentinel mm -hmm. and um when you buy it um you have two years for your subscription i think the siren marine if i recall was like maybe 120 a year it was 160, 180 180 180 yeah i think um the yacht sentinel i'll have to look but it's um it's a little cheaper per year uh, so you pay starting after this third year that's for the um, subscription. And then the system, the base system on that, I think, is 1500 And then the cameras aren't part of the package yet. And they're not listed on their website uh, yet either, the, price, the prices. So the base pack. Yeah, they have a kind of a gold, silver, bronze packages. So you can look at what comes with it. You can obviously buy additional units separately, but uh, to give you a price, it's... Uh, the gold version is uh, 1500 um silver is 12 1300 yeah so a little bit more so than yeah Siren, you will need to and then buy you'd have to buy the videos the, the video cameras. camera the yeah. other things that so that, that was fairly recent and uh, that they added the video cameras and they're also looking at adding some plugs that you can also uh, trigger uh, remotely so you could, and I'm, I'm assuming on a schedule or something. So a little bit um, like you could have a light in the boat, for example, and you could trigger it manually, or maybe you put it on a timer or something. And so every day you will have some light. So that will also be a deterrent for mm -hmm. people to come on the boat. Um, so, yeah. so there are things like these that uh, that are going. They're not yet released, but they're going to release. There was another thing that uh, they they have on their website, but they haven't released yet, is for a device to put on your uh, dinghy. 
And so from what I understand... Yeah, this was interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's not released yet, but from what what I understand, it's like you have three settings, you know, uh, short distance, medium distance, long distance. I don't know what they are. And so it's kind of a geosensing... Thing. Per, it sets a perimeter. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, if the dinghy was going to go further away than that peri- perimeter, then um, then the alarm will ring. Uh, so that's that's something that we're interested about because. Um, Let's uh, talk about the dinghy. We care about our dinghy. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen it yet, but so we got the coolest dinghy in the whole wide world. We got an OC tender from New Zealand. We bit the bullet. Um, we paid an astronomical amount of money to ship it uh, in a crate and all the way from New all Zealand the way from New Zealand to Venezuela to Germany yeah and next week it's going yeah. to go from Germany to so Long the whole thing when this whole thing went down it was in Germany and uh, had nothing gone down it, it would have arrived exactly on schedule mm-hmm. and uh, so that would have been awesome so it was it was sitting in Germany collecting dust and then someone decided just to randomly put it on a truck well, cuz no, we we weren't even I, ready to I mean we don't have a place to store well, it you know We not not totally randomly I mean I guess I have part of responsibility in that because uh we're paying I mean I don't remember now but the the purpose of this transport company is not to store stuff long term so you know the first few days we pay a certain fee and after that it's it's more it it ended up being like 300 bucks a month or something Maybe, like yeah, that. Something. Yeah, something. So when we, when I realized that, you know, our commissioning company was getting back, was reopening, I was like, I right away, I reached to the transport company and says, hey, you know, um, looks like we could consider, you know, transporting the dinghy uh, to La Rochelle. Like, you know, how soon could we um, get it delivered? And I was trying, I mean... And maybe I asked a question in the wrong way, or, but I was probing to get information. You were sort of like, how soon can we get it shipped or something uh, like yeah. this, it, which would lead one to believe that you wanted it shipped. So yeah. and anyway. And suddenly, uh, well, and then at the time, we, um, well, at least we didn't know um, that, you know, what happened to our boat. Right. So now, so now. Uh, in exchanging emails, they say, oh, we already picked up the dinghy from the storage place. So now the transport company, the trucking company has Had the, the dinghy. The dinghy yeah. There is no like bringing it back. And so now I say it's going to come on Tuesday. So in a couple of days from now. And now we're like, oh, Where do we put another the dinghy problem because in we don't crate. get, yeah, we don't want the dinghy to get stolen. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you can, you know. Uh, so that's a little bit why we wanted to look at these dinghy sensors and Serum Marine has another sensor. It's literally like $29 or something and it's called a snap sensor and you can wire it over the davits mm-hmm. to attach to the cover of the dinghy or some part of the dinghy, and, mm-hmm. and when it disconnects or through someone takes or yeah, through a yeah. magnet or something, it, it, it sounds the alarm. So that's one way to deal with it. But there's no mm-hmm. geotracking for that. So if someone took the dinghy, you, you know, we just don't know how we would. Yeah, so their solution currently is to basically buy a second unit. Right. That you would leave a, a central unit, like you would leave on a dinghy. And, um, and the base units for that are uh Five hundred dollars. Yeah, something. Yeah. And then you will need five ninety nine. So sorry. If you have a dinghy with some power in it, because you have whatever and <laughs> fancy dinghy, then you could power through this. In our case, we don't have power, so that means we will have to add, add a, battery, a battery. Probably add a small solar panels to power this, oh, yeah. and then you will need to pay for the subscription. Or so, of so a it second can unit. be uh, yeah. it can be tracked. So. It's a solution, but that becomes an expensive solution um, just for the dinghy. So, yeah, so the dinghy is kind of complicated matters, but anyway, we're, we're looking into other storage options. So right now, it. yeah, the last thing we want is put the, the body still on the heart for at least another week. So the last thing we want is to have the dinghy at the back of the boat <laughs> hanging and then basically it's telling people, hey, help hey. yourself. Yeah, we don't <laughs> want that. So that's my biggest fear is thinking. So the right now... 
I found a place where they store motorboats um, that is covered. That is really nearby. Um, so the we're marina. crossing our fingers. Yeah. So yeah, first thing, you know, is either late tonight or tomorrow morning to reach to this company and says, "Hey, do you have a spot mm-hmm. for a, for a crate?" Yeah. And then that will be the long term solution for us until we get there. And and if it's um, if it's the solution, then we can. Remove the boat, the dinghy from the crate, and we have wheels at the back, and we will be able to wheel it down the ramp and then to the boat, and that will solve that problem. Um, yeah. So that's where we are, and I think we're also still trying to understand, you know, if all this stuff is gone forever or what. Like they took fire extinguishers off the boat. We we oh, don't. That's gone. I mean, there's well, all sure. the flares. No, too. no, no, no. I know flares. that stuff's gone, yeah. but what we don't know is if our dealer is going to put it put it back on if they're going to replace these things that were supposed to come with the boat. And there's a big debate in terms of whose possession the boat is in when it comes out of the factory, which I won't go into, but Mm. it's maddening. Um, you can't, cause it's not in our possession. You, you couldn't even, you weren't really allowed to get on the boat. Like you had to have a yeah, chaperone to go it, on the boat when you were and, there. And it's, it totally makes sense. I mean, it's, you know, you basically, when the boat leaves the factory, you, the owner owns the boat basically. But it's still but, getting commissioned by your broker though. That makes no sense. Well, to me, it doesn't make sense. It, it's, 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 uh, it's a kind of a gray area that it's hard to, to understand. Yeah. So then because there is a commissioning process, the commissioning company wants to be able to have access to the boat, do the work, and they don't want anybody else to start doing stuff to yeah, the boat. Yeah, you weren't allowed it. on it. Yeah, so. unless unless there are obviously other people and I can ask to get on the boat. And that totally makes sense because, um, you know, as an owner, of course, you want to do the right thing with your boat. You want to have early access to it. But you could also be doing things to the boats that are maybe not proper yeah. and break the boat. Yeah, and that, then, that, I and mean, then, I get and, and then why who's responsible, right? But if you buy a boat, so if you if you get a contract that says your boat's going to have all these things on it, mm-hmm. different people are going to do stuff. So the factory is going to do stuff. The the commissioning agent's going to do stuff, and then there's a couple bells and whistles maybe that you know are gray area because the commissioning agent and the broker kind of work so closely together, you can't figure out who does what. So you get this bill of materials with all the things on it, and that's your boat. Like at handover, mm-hmm. that's the boat that you bought. Mm-hmm. So some of that stuff isn't on the boat when it comes out of the factory, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, when you do the handover, you expect to get the boat you paid for, not the boat you paid for minus fire extinguishers and mm-hmm. lines and a couple sails and a broken door. Like yeah. that's the issue I'm having. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And no. especially in France, you know, and so anyway, we're sorting through all that. I mean, I have a pretty good feeling that, you know, yeah, your Fallies and your spin lock and that kind of I, stuff's gone, yeah. you know, but the TV, we bought the TV so the commissioning agent could install the TV. It was yeah. part of the commissioning package that we bought. Mm-hmm. And that was the deal Yeah, because we wanted you to go pick the TV. We didn't want them to pick the TV. Yeah. So, so, and and because, I mean, we've talked about this, but because the boat is not in an official marina. Well, this you know, is what makes me crazy. So, so then it's, it's like, well, you know, you bring your car to a garage, you will expect the garage, if it has to keep the car overnight, is going to keep the, your car in a safe place so you don't come the next day and, and it's broken into and they say, oh, sorry, you own the car. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the analogy would be, you know, it's in France and stuff, but the analogy would be, the boat dealer gets the boat shipped, right, to Florida, say mm-hmm. something something local in the United States. And instead of putting it on their property or their dock, they park it at like the Denny's parking lot. That's what it would be like. That's the analogy. And I get that they have overflow traffic and stuff, but then when this whole COVID thing went down and everybody locked down, they just kind of left everything where it was. Yeah, I mean, it's not, there was no time to yeah. move things. And I and, know. You know. And so, in hindsight, so, you know, yeah. if, if it didn't get broken into in hindsight, like none of this would matter, you know, but it it's, just kind of is, is, is a lot of gray area to me. Yeah, it's very unusual circumstances. And yeah. I guess so far they've had boats there and they haven't had any issues. And so, but the problem is our boat. And now our boat is like, has <laughs> pooped in the tanks and there's a door that is bent and, and doesn't have all the accessories that come with the boat, like the fire extinguisher yeah. and some of the stuff that we had put there is gone too. So, yeah. so now it's just, and then there is not much we can do. Yeah. Um, 
and and it's going to sit like this, you know, for another few months until we can until go we over can there. Get there. So. Yeah, and I just guess uh, in closing, one mm-hmm. thing I want to say is um, Baptiste has been awesome. So yeah. he, uh, you know, the people on the ground. Uh, Pierre Edichimana has been awesome. Everybody's been really responsive yeah. that are on the ground. So yeah. those guys have been great. Yeah, yeah. no, tr- truly. Um, yeah. I think they feel as bad as we feel for yeah. what happened. And um, and so uh, they're taking care of our boat the same way they will take care of their boats. Yeah. You know? And there is no quick solution of putting the boat quickly in the water. The bottom paint has been done. Yeah. They prioritize to do all these they clean the boats. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the, the, the toilets. Uh, they, uh, Batiste, I mean, he's just going, He's been great. I mean, he's yeah. just like... He's sending pictures. Sending and pictures, all removing from the outdoor cushions, removing everything to wash them. Not because they are staying dirty or smell, but because somebody or a few people... You know, what he said was, if it were my boat, I would want yeah. him clean. And that's so. the way that's the yeah. way he's, he's doing things. And, and then, you know, uh, that's... Just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So what have you learned in the last week? What's um, your biggest takeaway? I, it's just the biggest takeaway is, you know, when we talked about, okay, you buy a boat from France and you're like, okay, it makes sense to take reception of like, take the boat in France because then we can start cruising the med. I speak French. So it's like, okay, it'll be easier and I can go there and I know the stores and stuff. So thinking like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. But now we're back here <laughs> and in the US. And yeah. you really cannot do I mean you wish you will be close and, and start to help out, start to do things and but you can also be there on the boat for that many months. And um Yeah, so it's weird. So we're doing this so, figuring out this handover, but mm-hmm. we're not there to do the handover, but somebody's gotta give us the boat mm-hmm. and then it sits there. So it's this weird thing. So yeah. then I was thinking is, you know, okay, it, it, is there a better way? <laughs> I don't know. I mean I, I think it's part of the you know, I mean, even if you get it shipped, you know, yeah. if you get it shipped to like Florida or something, I mean, if you live in Florida, that's fine. You might be close, but if you don't, then, you know, I mean, there are so many steps and and everything is, is remote. Um, it's just something to not underestimate yeah. when you buy, you know, you're not buying a car where you can go pick it up. Like, yeah. Um, and we tried to account for, it. we were like, okay, well, we're going to get the boat delivered. We're, we, we're going to ask for our delivery date in February and that'll, you know, get pushed out a few months mm. because of whatever. And then that'll give us some cushion and then for sure we can go in June. Mm-hmm. But never in a million years could we have, you know, obviously mm-hmm. seen this coming, right? Yeah. And, so. and the other thing is we always had in mind to install a security system yeah. um, because you had an anchorage, because you had a dock somewhere, because you leave your boat for the winter in some area and you come back home to visit family and friends. So it, it's it's almost that if you are going to buy a new boat just because most likely you're going to install a security system as soon as you can, just get, do it anyway. Just get your vendor do it, and yeah. and then we contacted them, and I think it, they agreed because there is this period of time where the owner doesn't have access to the boat, but there are weeks where the boat, the boat is going sits, to sit yeah. there somewhere. So why not have a, a security system as an option from the dealer, or even better, why not have like some security system offered as an option by the from factory. factory? Yeah, so it comes out exactly. of the factory. With at least the cent- central unit, and you can uh, have your dealer add some accessories. So it, it should be kind of, I mean, there are many things that should be on top of the, your list of options. But given given what happened to us, given that you're going to have to install a security system because it's an expensive boat and you're moving all your shit on it at some yeah. point, then, yeah. then just, just do it from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, my biggest lesson I learned was just have the security system installed as a priority Mm -hmm. through the commissioning because you're going to need it for the commissioning process and you don't know what's going to happen Mm -hmm. during that time. Yeah, because we were thinking, oh, we'll do it later. You know, so we were sort of doing some light research around Mm -hmm. the edges, but it wasn't really on our list of first things to do. That's kind of the first thing. The second thing is, you know, back to just our plan. Like hopefully the, the borders open up and hopefully we can leave in September. That doesn't leave much time. So we're back here for the winter. Mm -hmm. If we can't leave before, 
before, you know, October, which gives us just a month. I mean, we may not get the boat until spring. So yeah, that's um, a whole other adventure. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope that the borders, I mean, let's hope the virus yeah. situation gets the, better. Everybody, for everybody. Yeah, exactly. And then there's more testing available and then the airline companies start, you know, I mean, that, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that has, that has to align. And then we can put this whole pirate boarding adventure behind us. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, there will still be like, uh, <laughs> we will have a security system, but maybe we'll have to have more of also like, you know, boarding situations, <laughs> yeah. safety, safety procedures, yeah. procedures. And, you know, maybe, uh, have spikes, have, you know, I don't know, <laughs> do something. Booby trap. Booby traps. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> like something from falls from the mast and I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No okay, guess. well, uh, so that's the update for this week. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, like, or share with another covert castaway. Fair winds for now. Oh, 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 o